trying to be here and look who you found, Mr. David Hayter. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. So nice to see you again. You too. And it's good to see you here in Toronto, your home town, right? Yeah, it's nice to be here. Yeah. Where do you, do you still live here now? Uh, no, I, I, I lived in Los Angeles for quite some time, but um, but I, I own a place here and, and my, my heart still lives here. Your heart's here, the body's over there. That's right. <laughs> I try to keep them separate. Yeah, good to know you can sort of disassociate yourself. Yes, it keeps you from getting it broken. Because um, something I've realized is that a lot of voice actors, there seems to be like a club here, voice acting is very easy to People from Toronto tend to be very, very talented, so um, I think that's that that could explain. Something in the water. I think it's the water. It's ta it's talent water. Uh, no, I I have no idea. I mean, you know, this is sort of this is the biggest city in Canada, and this is, you know we collect a lot of uh, great people. So. Are there many different voice actors here? Is there a different I have no idea. Uh, I, I've only, I think I've only voice recorded here once or twice, um, just because I was on other jobs and I needed to finish something for Star Wars or whatever. So, like when you work for Star Wars, um, you go anywhere in the world and they just say, "Oh, well, we've got a booth for you." Yeah. So, so that's what. Uh, so I've done it a few times here, but but most of my voiceover is done. I mean, that's what's also great about it. You can be all over the world. Pretty great. Okay. Pretty, I was thinking you. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, absolutely. And you just also come back from Europe. That's true. Did you pick up any accents there? Can you do uh, you know, like Italian accent or? Oh uh, no. Uh, well, uh, you know, I could do like, like a Northern England. You know, I was in Manchester, and people they say, "Yeah, my name is Harris with an with an H," and I was like, "Well, that's, that seems very strange." <laughs> You wouldn't say the H in the thing, but then you pronounce H, H. Um, so I picked up that, and uh, I managed to speak a lot of French in, in France, which is pretty cool. And I spoke some terrible, terrible Spanish. <laughs> Spain. What is your go-to French or French phrase, Spanish phrase? Because everyone has that thing that they always think of. I don't know. Well, I think the Français, je parle français, parce que je suis Canadien, donc c'est facile pour moi de changer le français. Uh, for uh, l'espagnol, es muy malo. Uh, I like to say, ah, que lastima, you know, oh, that's so sad um, in, in times of trouble. Unfortunately, my Spanish is not very good. No, I have none. <laughs> and um, is there a favorite thing that you did when you were away on holiday? Yes, I, I was walking down the Champs Elysees in Paris with my family. And uh, we came upon a group of guys wearing Ferrari t-shirts and they had a Lamborghini uh, souped up Mustang and a Ferrari California. And they said, you can drive it for 20 minutes through Paris for 90 euros. And I said, that's the best deal I ever heard. Yeah. And so we, uh, so we rented this Ferrari California and drove it around, took pictures in front of the, the uh, Eiffel Tower, which it's on my, you can see it on my Twitter. And uh, that was pretty cool. So I know that we've talked a lot before about your sort of role as a voice acting. I want to know a little bit more about you. So when you're preparing to do a voice, do you have like a regimen that you go through at all? Sure. Well, you mean to get warmed up for the thing? Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of um, I do a lot of humming, and I mean, it's kind of boring. I, I just I hum through different uh, tones and stuff until my voice is warmed up, yeah. which it is now. I've been doing snake for everybody, um, and the snake, I'll, I'll roll it back until it starts to rumble and sort of get that gravel going on, and um, and then I do a lot of singing. I'm always belting out various songs in the car. And oh yeah. Looking for what kind of songs get you warmed up? Uh, it depends. It depends on what I'm playing. Um, so you know, sometimes if it's really rough, I'll do like Foo Fighters or something. If it's if it's got to be smooth, I'll do Les Mis or something showy, you know. Okay. The range. That's right. And how about a writing? Do you have like a lucky pen or a specific place that you like to write? Well, I write in my office at home, uh, so I'm surrounded by all my movie posters and things that I've done, so it kind of inspires me to keep keep going. Um, I don't have a lucky pen. Well, I mean, I always use these pens. Uh, this is the Uniball right. Vision 
fine pen. So, so if you want to write like David Hayter, this is the, the pen. ball pen is the one. <laughs> I always have that on me, and um, but no, I just uh, yeah, I, I sit on my couch in my office and I put my feet up and just write Type every away. morning. And are you working on anything at the moment? Yeah, I'm working on a bunch of different things, but um, they're all sort of secret until they come out. But uh, but some very very cool genre stuff, and hopefully we'll be seeing some of it next year. So finally, um, I'm going to ask you a bit of a random question. What would your favorite emoji be to sort of epitomize your most famous character in the Sonic? I think favorite emoji. I, you know, I'm not very familiar with emojis. I know there's one that cries and there's one that's poop. Um, what do you I, think a solid snake emoji would be? That would, well, do they have a little snake? So if they had a snake with like an exclamation point over its head, I think that would probably be ideal. That's what we need to be. Yeah. Time. yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for talking to us again. It's been brilliant to meet you.